Hello, I'm Summer Hamoud. I'm coming from the Rothman Orthopedic Institute in Philadelphia. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a perfect meniscal repair. Specifically, today, we're going to be working on the medial meniscus as it tends to be the more challenging uh, meniscal repair. I'm going to show you how to use the fiber stitch implant to get sequential vertical mattress stitches that mimic an inside-out repair on both the femoral and tibial sides and how to do this with ease. So here we're in a right knee. This is the medial compartment here. And so we're in flexion. We're going to come into extension and a little bit of a valgus load here. My assistant's going to be helping. And so what we've already done here is done an MCL fenestration to allow us adequate access and visualization of this peripheral vertical longitudinal tear. You can see both the femoral side of the tear as well as the tibial side of the tear. And so we are going to be addressing each of these independently to get multiple points of fixation and really mimic an inside-out repair. So we're going to start typically on the femoral side just because the meniscal tissue can be quite mobile at this point. And it just tends to be more difficult to puncture the tibial side as your initial stitch. So I usually start on the femoral side. I place my stitches sequentially, starting more peripherally and then going more centrally towards the root mainly because it allows the sled to protect the previously placed sutures and not get them entangled with the subsequent stitch. And so we'll come in now with our first implant. And we can go first either on the capsular side or on the meniscal side. I'll start in the meniscus here, puncture through the meniscus, and then reduce the tear. Go through the capsule, deploy the first implant, pull back, and then we'll travel up to the capsular side. Deploy the second, and then pull out. So what you'll see here is the uh, loop and the second stitch. And so I'm going to grab all of them together and just gently pull to set the anchor initially. And then I'm going to take a clamp and clamp them all together and leave it. So then when I come in with my sled for the subsequent stitch, you can see here the benefit of starting peripherally and working more centrally because that stitch is now out of my way. I'll come in with the second implant. And this one I'm actually going to start on the capsular side. And that's a little bit of a trick. If you take this implant, you go more towards the root and you slide. It can help you get onto that capsular side. And then through the meniscal tissue. And again, you can take advantage of the curve in order to get the implant through the tissue and then through the capsule appropriately. We'll go ahead and set this stitch as well and then place a clamp. Again, this continues to keep each one separate but allows us to continue to place each subsequent vertical mattress stitch with excellent visualization because as you place a vertical mattress stitch on the femoral side, what you'll see is that the meniscus tissue will start to evert, which we want it to do ultimately to get our tibial sutures in, but it can obliterate your view for your subsequent femoral sided sutures. So we'll come in with our final implant. I felt like the length of this tear on the femoral side warranted three. You can again use the curve to angle away from the midline in the posterior aspect of the knee. And then I'll basically start at this point just from a point of ease. I don't think the order of tensioning matters too much, um, but just because this is the final one that I placed, I'll start with this one. So we're going to set the first vertical mattress stitch. So we're in the loop out here and we're going to tension this down and we can really dial in the tension that we like to see here. And then we'll take the probe out and then pull on the simple strand to tension down the second. So what we see is happening now that I've tensioned it down is you see how the tibial side starts to evert itself. And it does make your subsequent placement of your femoral sutures a little bit more difficult. So it's nice to have these all placed at once. At this point, you can come through and cut that suture, so we'll go ahead and do that. 
Alternatively, you can tension all three of them and then cut them sequentially at the end. So now we're going to take our second suture, which is clamped here. We unclamp it, keeps everything separate. Again, we've already set it. We're going to take that first loop, tension it down, and then the free strand. You can see how that's nicely continuing to tension down the femoral side. And now our final stitch here on the femoral side. So now we see our femoral sutures have been placed. They've tensioned down that meniscal repair. And now we're going to address the tibial side portion of the tear here. This length of the tear, I'm gonna use two fiber stitch implants as it's not quite as long as the femoral side here. We're gonna start again, start from peripheral and go centrally. So now we're going to, because it's everted like this, we're gonna easily puncture the tibial side. And just like we've done before, we're gonna set it and clamp it. We'll take our sled, slide in more centrally, protect those previous sutures, and get our next implant. We'll grab them all, set, and then we'll go ahead and start to take the probe and tension this down. So again, you see, as we tension the tibial sided sutures down, it does tend to take away that eversion of the meniscus. And so having placed both of your implants on the tibial side first prior to tensioning really helps you ensure that you have perfectly placed vertical mattress stitches. It's our second implant. Come in here and cut our final suture. So this is the final repair. So you can see we have three vertical mattress stitches across the femoral side and two across the tibial side, really anatomically reducing the medial meniscal tear and giving multiple points of excellent fixation and compression across the tear site to ensure healing and excellent initial strength with uh, loading and weight bearing.